Today on episode 99, our Dan Hampton episode of Typical Chicago Fans, we have Sinkers and Floaters, the TCF Sports Minute, our media recommendations, ideas under the influence, and our all-star team. Let's roll. Hello and welcome to episode 99 of Typical Chicago Fans. It is me, Boomy, on Twitter at Boomy TCF. Make sure to follow the main page at Typical underscore Chicago. Head over to Facebook and Instagram. Type in Typical Chicago Fans. You can find us there. Give those pages a like. Head over to YouTube as well. Type in Typical Chicago Fans. Subscribe to that page for all of our content in video form. Make sure to subscribe, rate, and review on Apple Podcasts. Follow us on Spotify, Spreaker, Google Podcasts. Wherever you get your podcast, make sure you find us there. But make sure you follow the, the guys that I am joined with tonight. That is Zach at Z Lilia TCF and Maddie, of course, at schools underscore zero one. Today's episode is brought to you by our friends over at 26shirts.com Chicago. Head on over to their website, 26shirts.com slash Chicago, to check out some of the coolest Chicago sports merchandise around. They've got everything from the T-shirts you see behind me to hats, hoodies, uh, flags, the shirt Zach has on, whatever you need, they have it. Head over to their website, find the product that you love, use to promo code typical Chicago fans for 15% off of your order. Let them know that you sent us. Help out a great website help out great causes, and help out the podcast. That's promo code typical Chicago fans at checkout, 26shirts.com slash Chicago. Boys, episode 99, we are on the verge of 100. Dan Hampton episode. Uh, obviously, you guys are the, the Bears fans around here. What are your thoughts on Dan Hampton? Well, I oh, have oh, uh, a helmet signed by him because of Boomy. So. I felt a little dirty buying that, but it was a, a good right purchase. Here. and. Right uh, Signed by Dan Hampton, Hall of Famer from Boomy. So thank you for that. <laughs> um, but like I said, look at that. You bought that helmet just for this occasion, right? Boomy? I did. I, I knew 99 was going to hit in about, I think I bought that in April or May. And I knew it between, you know, eight, eight and 12 months, we'd be hitting episode 99. So I was pre-planning. Hmm. Maddie, you talk about Dan Hampton? Uh, I was, he was playing like the you know i saw the tail end of his career not like his prime or anything but yeah um you know, i mean he was a uh an absolute you know his stuff hall of famer speaks for himself dominant defensive lineman and uh you know one of the pillars on the on the 85 defense so um yeah i got nothing bad to say about that guy i don't you know hall of famer what speaks for itself you know did Dan Hampton play for anybody else in his career other no. than the Bears? No. I didn't think so. I think he was one of those guys that had finished with the team. No, started McMichael, with. McMichael no. played for the Pack, but uh, not very well, if I remember correctly. Yeah, not where no, he was pretty much done at that point. But uh, Hampton, um, yeah, he was a Bear for his whole career. The injuries kind of caught up with him a little bit earlier than you would expect to, but. Got to respect the guy who who's in the Hall of Fame. Obviously, won a won a title in Chicago. Nothing good nickname butters. too, the Danimal. That's a good yeah. nickname for, for a D is, lineman. That is a top tier uh, nickname. I can't disagree sure. with you there. <laughs> Uh, but let's jump into it. As always, leading off, we have sinkers and floaters. I'll start off with my sinker, and that's COVID, because I am now fully vaccinated. I got shot two on Friday. It kicked my ass. Um, Friday for about 20 uh, – I was good from like 10 a.m. until 6.30 p.m., and then I all sat in, and Friday night was miserable. Uh, Saturday, I had zero energy, felt very low T, uh, but feeling back on top of it today. And, um, you know, like me and, uh, and Zach were talking yesterday, you know, it's – you don't feel invincible, but you definitely have a little bit more peace of mind when you, you know, go out in public and, and things like that. So I managed to make it a year. It didn't, didn't contract COVID, knock on wood, um, but now I'm fully vaccinated. So kick COVID's ass in my mind. I'm no doctor, but your low heard... issues are not. Uh, Has nothing to do with related. the shot. Yeah. Yeah. That's I just who I am as a person. <laughs> Boomy got poked pretty hard in the arm. Yeah, I'm I'm convinced that lady had a personal vendetta against me. Um, I think she was trying to get that needle down to the bone in my arm. Um, I thought she gave a wind up. I thought she was trying out for for the Cubs minor league team. But um, it, my left arm is about the only thing that hurts. Um, 
and, and I made it, like I said, pretty much throughout the day. I got home and sat down on the couch about 630, and then it all kind of sat in and, uh, you know, fever, chills, body aches. Um, and then yesterday, like I said, just no energy, but today kind of out and about, went and got brunch with the family and, uh, you know, enjoyed my, my mother's birthday, early birthday. So happy early birthday to my mother. I know we're like a week away, but um, enjoyed that and kind of feeling back to as close to normal that I have felt since probably Thursday night. So um, can't complain here. Kind of love it, Boomy. You're fully vaccinated, ready to go. Ready to roll. Ready as to Steiner would say. Roll. Well, my sinker, kind of the same, my body, um, <laughs> but it's because I played 36 holes of disc golf um oh, also boy. also walking through a little bit of snow um but it was well if you were better at disc golf you wouldn't have thrown it into the snow i tried um <laughs> but yesterday or today it was sunday woke up a oh, pretty sore um you think about the motion of throwing a disc that many times um is not something that i've been doing at all for a while. I think me and Boomy went, what was that, probably about four or five months ago? Uh, that was like in November. So, yeah, probably about four months ago. So, that was the last time we did that. And, he's, and like you've, said, done a good been you've been going to the gym and working out, but it's a completely different type of motion. It's yeah, like it's, when it's you pick up a new sport. You haven't really been outside a lot, uh, so your body's not really used to that. Uh, especially, it, you don't really notice, like – because my feet got all wet a few times yeah. walking through the snow. That just sucks. Anytime your feet get wet, that means your socks are going to get wet. That just. Well, I will not get mad about that because it was a, a great day. Um, beautiful out. And even though it is my sinker in a way, my body is, uh, I'm still happy that the yeah. weather is the way it is. Uh, we're looking at 60s this week, boys. Woo. Can't beat that. Cannot beat that. Absolutely. Maddie, what's your sinker? Uh, my sinker is monarchies. And uh, that's because, uh, as we, or we're seeing on social media tonight, uh, there's a lot going on with uh, the All-Star game and everything else going on. But then the, uh, the, the royal family has a, uh, an interview with is it Prince William and Meghan Markle, the uh, yes. recently ousted from the royal family uh, on their own. Went yeah, on, uh, say, on their with, own, on their own interview with Oprah, and uh, already got a little little back and forth going on. So I like it. The uh, you know the royal family's getting barbecued, um, you know, by yeah. directors from Suits, which cool. is kind of cool. Uh, so shout out America there that <laughs> our actresses from Suits can you know take the royal family to which task. isn't even like a C level TV show, right? But like I mean, when you think about like the world we're in, is literally there's an actress, you know. Getting interviewed by Oprah Winfrey about her being ousted from the royal family. Um, she said Kate Middleton made her cry. I want to know where Pippa is and all this because Pippa's the real rock star in the uh, the whole dynamic. Uh, you guys know what I'm talking about. Yes. Uh, I think, frankly, it just comes down to it. The Queen's just got to get the house in order. You know? Oh, yeah. It, it, or else this monarchy's done. You know, you can't hey, fra- listen. It can't fracture like this or else we're, there's there's – there's big problems. You nailed it, Matt. And I don't know about you guys. Anytime like royal weddings and stuff, I could legitimately care less. Like the royal family is like just a figurehead monarchy. They don't do anything. They're everybody makes a big deal out of it. I love that we've got, you know, C list celebrities gunning for the top. We're taking over. Britain, sorry, it's not 1752 anymore. You're not the top of the food chain. We're coming for you. Fellas, right. I'm a little confused. So Queen Elizabeth remarried, right? From what I've heard. Uh, heard. And he's not the king. No. No, Because he was not bloodline. Queen Elizabeth, yeah, no. Queen Elizabeth's the bloodline. I know. That's why she's the queen. She didn't marry a king. She married her. Whoever she marries a a prince. He marries a queen. He should be the king. No, that's not how it works. I tend to agree with the sentiment there. Like, the, there's the logic of that makes sense. The whole thing um, is sh- confusing. Shout out so. the over, by the way, the All Star game. It ended at 320 if the over was 319. So, Ooh. with this weird ass scoring, it was one point off. Tell me how good Vegas is. Unbelievable. <laughs> um, but no, the, the royal family, what a wild, wild soap opera this is. I'm here I think for they're, it. They're closer to the end than they are of like, 
close or then being closer to like their their height. Oh, they, of their they have power. no power. Like, they haven't had no, any power yeah. since what, 18. Like, yeah, it's early 1900s at the very latest. Yeah. Yeah, I, I can't say it. Like, everybody makes, like, the biggest, oh, I got up at 4 a.m. to watch the Royal Wedding. Who the no. hell cares? No, I mean, it sounds terrible. No, but what, you. Princess Di was the last remaining chance at uh, carrying some uh, some spotlight on the uh, the Royal family. And they had her killed. Yeah, they did, definitely. Definitely had her killed. Oh, yeah. I'm team booby on that one 100%. Yep. Zach, go look it up, man. It's barely yeah. even a conspiracy anymore. It's, yeah, it's not a conspiracy. There's blood on the Queen's plain, hands. It's plain, it's plain it. fact. Well, that's insane. Don't cross Wild. the Queen. Don't cross the Queen. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, my floater, on the other hand, is uh, Sumatran orangutans. Um, completely related to what we were just talking about. Um, <laughs> but the New Orleans Zoo, uh, they had... Uh, an orangutan give birth. Uh, it's the second baby orangutan, Sumatran orangutan, born in the last two years, and they are a super endangered species. There's only 14,000 of them left. So shout out to Sumatran orangutans. They are not, uh, maybe they're not as, as dead as everybody thought they were. So <laughs> orangutan is pretty sweet. Monkeys in general are pretty sweet. I had a pretty good tweet at 5.50 in the morning on Saturday morning that I don't really remember firing off uh, with my fuzzy brain about monkeys i'm a big monkey fan so yeah i saw that i was a little confused but then you said you didn't even remember doing the tweet. it was a little hazy but um my floater boys you know salt bay right the guy that does the yeah his net worth is sixty nine million dollars. Yeah, do those restaurants in like some of the richest cities in the i understand in- that but that's a lot of money oh yeah I mean, <sighs> hey, you got a market corner, you know. I know, but that's crazy. Have when you ever seen the goat? You're, when you're the goat, you're the goat, man. Good for him. Good for Salt Bay, but I did yeah. not think he was worth almost seventy million dollars. There's comes nobody, from... nobody that can drop a spice like him. At, that's for sure. Um, he, he, if you look up, there's like a video on his backstory. He was born into like extreme poverty in Turkey, I want to say. Really? Um, yeah. Really? Yeah. Like extreme poverty. Dollars. Yeah. And then kind of like came up in like small restaurants and just like learned as he moved throughout Europe. And now, like Zach said, he's worth more money uh, than Calvin. I got yeah. to uh, ask you guys. And the only reason I'm asking is because it's kind of like both of this story and then another. Uh, internet legend was uh trending today as well and that's red panda so if you're picking one red panda or salt bay as an internet legend who you got red panda i'm going salt bay i'm going going red panda too but i like them both yeah that's that's so much talent (laughs) it's unbelievable that is unbelievable (laughs) yeah what red panda can do the way I look at it is like it's dynamic when you ask that question how do you even how do you even figure out you're good at that yeah, I, yeah, that's a good question. <laughs> but like the way wild. I look at it is when wild you say like see. think of those two internet legends, like I think about meeting them or like being able to like see their performance. Like Red Pan would be sweet, but at least with Salt Bay, you get to meet him and then like you probably get to like try his food. So you know, I, I'd much rather see Red Panda. That is something, Red Panda's that's food for awesome your eyeballs, thing. though. That's awesome. I mean who What's would, she doing for my stomach? Who, what, when would somebody be like, hey, let's try this out? She gives you a bowl <laughs> to fill with food afterwards. Now, if you could combine them, she, she tosses head. you a bowl, and then there's there's steak in it, get, and then he does no. his little thing. Now we're best of both worlds. Let's just say that that food that Salpe is giving you, um, it's about $150 probably. I Fair just minimum. assumed this was an all-expenses-paid <laughs> The TCF no. sponsored uh, no. dinner, yeah. Or I won some online lottery, or I don't know. Um, but anyway, Matt, do you have a floater this week? I, I do, and uh, it's the same one I had a couple weeks ago, and it's a similar situation. But the UFC and uh, boys, I think I'm one thousand percent in on the UFC at this point. And yeah, pretty awesome. after last night, it's 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 the perfect event. I know you guys know my setup, and I talk about it a lot. But like, I got the multiple TVs in here, and also in my living room. So like, wherever I'm at, I can throw something else on on the side. 
usually baseball has always been like a go-to for like a side TV is because it's just the pace of it. But UFC is like the perfect event for a side TV as well because mm-hmm. it's just the downtime between fights. But then you can lock in during it. But my God, last night's card, it was unbelievable, man. This this Islam Makashev is like a grappler. And I'm not a big UFC guy, so I know I'm not like – I mean, none of my analysis is like coming from, a, from an expert by any means. But his performance last night as a grappler, like he, he – I mean, apparently he's from the, the Khabib, uh, the tree – of wrestlers mm. from uh, from Russia, so he was absolutely dynamite, just a pure, just utter dominating performance. So, um, but then like Amanda Nunez, probably the, it sounds like is a everybody says the greatest female fighter of all time. She didn't even break a sweat. It was it was outstanding what she did, dude. It, it, she, just an amazing amazing talent. A uh, couple other good fights that uh, um, the belt change on a DQ from a guy getting kneed in the head last night, which is just... Is that what that illegal knee was? Yeah. Called? Yeah, he was down. He was down on both knees. The ref called and said he's down. And uh, Peter Jan uh, called to his corner, and someone in his corner said he hit him. So he hit him. He, hit, he kneed him. So I think there was a miscommunication. I think they didn't understand what the ref was saying. And uh, kneed him. Knocked the guy out, dude. Like, bad. And, like, um, Sterling uh, won the belt as a result of it. And he he grabs the belt, drops it immediately, just walks really? away. Because he's like, I'm not winning it like that. He didn't yeah. want it like that. He was getting dominated. This pure, oh pure, pure tor Jan or whatever the father this looked like Peter, but they don't, they didn't pronounce him Peter. Yeah. But this guy was outstanding. And, uh, Lost the fight though because of the uh, the DQ. He was he was dominating the whole fight and uh, ended up losing the belt because of it. Wow! Good I saw fight, that though, overall. Like what in the heck? How does that? I didn't know yeah. this to the head. I the groin Another, shot. Uh, then that Israel Adesanya. He was undefeated going into last night. He lost. So crazy, uh, crazy night of fights. Boomy, I'm sorry. We're going right into sports update, but Giannis was 16 for 16 tonight. Yeah, he was field. insane. One of his last shot was a banked in three, too. That's crazy. Yeah. Banked he was trying three. to bank it in. It was. Uh, well, let's let's get right into that then. Like, what are you guys' thoughts? Obviously, the the All Star weekend was this weekend. Um, yeah, I think we might have some mixed reactions. What do you guys think about the All Star format? I think it's it's awesome the way that they do like the the three point contest and the the dunk contest and all that kind of stuff. I think that's awesome, um, and the scoring. I mean, you can say what you want. Like, I, it doesn't really matter when it comes down to it how they do the scoring and yeah, they're doing it. I, it's the thing for Kobe from last year, right? Yeah. So that's cool, but I think the the way that they're doing the three point contest and the dunk contest on the day of the All Star game is awesome. I think that, like doing that stuff on like the Saturday night before, like I, I just think that it, you you'll get more eyes if you if you do it all on one night. And I agree with you, Zach. I'm totally in on that, but I don't think we'll ever see that again because there's too much money in the TV contract. Oh yeah, I'm not saying that Saturday night. I really liked it. Yeah, I agree. I agree completely. I think that was a, it was a great lead in. Um, I can tell you today is the most time I've spent watching an NBA All Star Weekend and slash All Star Game in years. So since I was a kid, it was on. It was either on my iPad when I was in the kitchen cleaning up, or it was on my TV down in the basement here. The, the whole dunk night. contest so. was on at halftime, right? Yeah. So it makes yes. you have the, to watch the at three, least a little bit of the first half and then skills you know, skills in the three point contest and, before the game. Oh, yeah. Steph Curry, unreal. Yeah, yeah he I, carried it over into the game too. I I like the way they do the scoring where they is so if you don't know, they take the score after the third quarter, am I correct? And then they add twenty four to it, and then the first team to get to add, that number. So like if the leading to the has, leading team. And yeah, so like let's just say they, for example, they have 150. Then they say the first team to get to 174 wins the game. I right. like it just because I it, it, like last year. If you remember how that All Star game went down, like it was super competitive. It made the end of the game interesting. Um, 
when normally like if you you think of an all-star game it could get you know 30 40 and i think that's why they you know obviously kobe the reason they did it last year um but it was to keep it interesting and i think that's a good way going forward just to keep more eyes on it the entire time and going to give a little incentive there at the end of the game but unfortunately i don't think we're going to see the dunk contest and the three-point contest held on the same but like you said zach they should i mean it's getting everybody's eyes on it and um We'll see what they do going forward. Um, but we also have to stay in basketball. We got to talk about the Fighting Illini. Um, as of right now, and you guys can correct me if I'm wrong, I think the Fighting Illini, as of now, are a number one seed, if not the one seed. Um, obviously, Gonzaga's undefeated. I think they're going to get it. But sitting where we are recording, um, you know, March 8th, the Fighting Illini, looking at a one seed. Definitely. Yeah, well, I, mean, I think it's a lock know, at this they, point. They beat Michigan. Uh, you can't you can't beat two top five teams and oh there was was Ohio State seven. Um, were they four? They were somewhere. There's no near one there. else. There's no one else in the hunt. There's no one else in the hunt, regardless of what Illinois does in the Big Ten tournament. Oh yeah, I mean though they're even though they're the two seed in the Big Ten tournament, which is just because the conference was crazy. Right. Um. But yeah, either way, I mean, they could. I, I say they could lose their first game and still be the number one seed for what they've done the last few weeks. Yeah. How can you not? I don't think it's a, it's a lock, but I, I think they would still, like you said, Jack, if they lost the first one, I don't think it's a but lock right now they, because they you'd have, have to wait. Four, if, think about it. If Baylor better. wins the Big 12, then that's already another one. So Gonzaga, Baylor, Michigan wins the Big 10, they're probably going to give them a one seed. If Illinois gets knocked out in the beginning, it's not a lock, but I think either way. It's definitely a lock. There's nobody else that would take it. No one else has a good enough resume. I don't. I mean, they beat Ohio State and Michigan the last few weeks that are, like I said, a top five, ten team. There's no, the problem is there's no Pac-10 team good enough. There's no ACC team good enough. So you eliminate the conference champions right there. Sure. So Virginia's not good enough, and Oregon's not good enough. USC's not good enough. There's so no let's just say, hypothetically, Baylor wins the Big 12, Michigan or Iowa wins the Big 10, and Alabama wins the SEC, and Illinois gets knocked out in the first round. I think the, Illinois has I, it only because the Big 10 is so much better than the SEC. Okay. But you would take them over um, – And I a, think you would be a Big 10 champion in Iowa be- or a Big 10 champion Michigan? Yes. Absolutely. Absolutely, Michigan's a guaranteed one. I think all four, all four ones are locked down. I okay. think it's Gonzaga, Baylor, Michigan, Illinois. I think those four teams have separated themselves from the field, regardless of what happens this coming week. I don't disagree. I think Illinois has got to win at least one. You hope but, they do, but and you yeah, saw what they it. just did without an aisle. So yeah. you know, I mean, now that they got them back, it's like, you know. I think they've done enough. I think they've yeah. earned it. These last two I, I, I think innings. you're likely to see Bama as the, the top two seed. So you'll see them wherever Illinois or Michigan is. Well, and like you said, Matt, the, the other competition, like West Virginia loses, was that yesterday? Right. Yep, huge um, loss. You know, they don't do themselves any favors. Obviously, Ohio State sitting at seven. They the don't only do chance themselves. would be – the only chance I could maybe see – it'd be a really sneaky one as a team that's starting to get hot as Kansas, who w- wins the Big 12. Um pushing Baylor down and sure. you know, Kansas. I just don't think that I think their early season resume was a little bit too detrimental in my opinion. Yeah. And I mean, they're sitting at eight losses right now that take a, I mean, they would have to not only beat Baylor solely but take because they're, the they're starting to get really hot. And we know the talent they have. Definitely. Definitely. And we are uh, now currently a week away from selection Sunday. Yes. Um, as we are recording, yeah, this. We'll, be, we'll be able to talk about bracket one week from that. Today. Will be about all of uh, the TCF Sports Minute next week. So um, excited to say the least. Um, this is one of the best weeks, though. We we love March Madness. We love the first day, but we got conference tournament week is awesome. Starting oh, Wednesday, week. Tuesday. Ooh. Uh, there's games already tomorrow. Um, some of those, and a lot of those are like the early, you know, 14 versus a 12 seed, but still, you're going to get some good games. Yeah, I think uh, the Big Ten starts Wednesday. I believe you are correct. And that's also, I believe, when the AC, yes, that's when the ACC starts as well. So, um, yeah, a lot happening this week. Uh, the Blackhawks, as we talked about on the Daily Show the other day, had three games with the Tampa Bay Lightning in four days. Matt, they picked up three points, right? They did. They had a lead in all three games. 
which we did say on uh, Thursday's show, which we would consider a win in this series. But I also hey, like can I, Maddie. More. Can I be? Can I be uh, rude? Are you gonna talk about my tweet? Yeah. Yeah, the tweet that Matt, Matt was saying that he would. What I wanted would five. Said, I, I only got a little wanted greedy. Three. I got a, we I got, got a little five. Greedy. I wanted five after they went up three nothing. My bad, Zach. I understand that, Matty, but we got to understand with the, the Blackhawks, how many times. I'm not going to wear a half here. All I said was I wanted five. I didn't say, I said I'd only be happy. They were, I said I'd be happy. I wanted five after being up three nothing in that third game. I don't think that's, that's an outlandish tweet. No, but, I'm with you. You also did say what idiot would only say they wanted three. <laughs> Point you. <laughs> <laughs> but that was tough though you can't you can't do that at home uh, yeah at, uh, well the, the problem is they blew a two nothing lead in the first game they blew a three nothing lead to you know on sunday so it's like they kind of had to scratch back and fight team. back for the we always the want to say this team's back this team's playing really well but they're young and this this can happen a lot yeah i will be i will eat Crow, I have talked a lot about PK Subban and how not good or not PK Malcolm. Subban, Malcolm Subban Malcolm. and how not good he is. And I watched the entire game Friday night. Um, I'm a lot of times I'm in and out of games, um, but he gave up two goals early, and I'm like, this kid is exactly who I thought he was. He stinks. He's not that good. He stopped probably six to eight, like wide open run. You know, a guy trying to score in him. And he made some incredible plays there. I think it was in the second period. And I'm just like, it, there's sometimes like he gives up a ton of goals. And it's like you have to remember that a lot of those aren't exactly just his fault. So there was there was one he got with the handle of a stick. Yes, on one point that was up up on his hip. And it, it was one of those plays. that's just like so only a, only a goalie with elite level talent can make a play like that. So it's like you know it's there with him. And he was a really really you know. Highly thought of prospect coming in, coming up and coming into the league, and you know never really panned out as like like they thought he would. But you know sometimes it takes a little time. All right, Matt, I got one more question for you. Um, Malcolm Subban, you know, plays well Friday night, gets the job done. Blackhawks win in a shootout. They go with Lankin in night uh, or today in uh, the day game versus Tampa again. Do you? I almost think they maybe should have rode the hot hand with Subban? Am I off thinking that? Do you go back to Lankin because he's your guy now, or do you let the hot hand ride there? I was a little little disappointed, I guess you would say. In not they, it's, worked, it's worked for the rotation that they've had, and frankly today, it was four power play goals. That's not much on Lankin, in my opinion. Yeah, and that, that That's on three of the penalties, and just piss poor penalties to take. You know, that you can't do especially when you're preserving a lead against one of the best teams in the league. It's just it's bad penalties. You can't take them like that. Like Connor Murphy's penalty. I don't think he meant to. I, I, yeah. He got a game of misconduct and he's probably going to get you know, very well to get suspended. I don't think the intent was there, but um, you know, so a penalty like that was killer. And I know they, they, they ended up killing the five minute off, but it's one of those things where it's, you cannot give multiple chances shorthanded against, a lightning when you're the black yeah. you just can't do it so in that regard i'm not going to put those necessarily on lankin and would you like him to, to play a little better on the, on the kill to help out sure but you know it is what it is they've had their they've been successful with the rotation they've gone with you know back and forth with those two um i think you'll know when one of them starts getting hot and suban played great i wouldn't quite say he's showing the hot hand yet though like i want to yeah. see like it was a great game he had. I want, to see, I, want, I want to string some elite games before I start saying, all right, we need to start going maybe a 60-40 or 65-35 split between. Sure. Totally, totally understandable. And and holy cow, are the Tampa Bay Lightning fast. I noticed that. I mean, fast, but Victor Hedman, a, a defenseman, that that is that big, that just skates the way he does and just has a shot that just explodes off his stick. Man, it's That guy is an unbelievable yes. player to watch. If you could – if you, if Owen was like grew to be like a six four, two hundred and thirty pound like hockey player, I would say do everything that yes. guy does and just play exactly like Victor Hudson. He looks he doesn't skate like a guy his size should be able no. to skate. He no, he carries the puck in, dude. He he brings it up into the net area. I guess, 
He walked walked one in, a possession, walked it in right into the slot all on his own. Yeah. Went, went right around two guys, dumps off a nice little pass, almost had a gimme shot that just kind of went off the side of the net. But, you know, he, a guy that can make plays like that that's that big and fast is crazy from a defenseman. Well, and also, I mean, Steven Stamkos, who it feels like has been in the NHL for two decades, three how about, decades. How about him it? lining up a, a one-timer on a power play? Because it's just – it's a cannon coming off, dude. It's like, how is he still good in 2021? Like, I remember that guy being on the cover of an NHL game back when I was, like, in high school, I think. He, he's younger than Kane, by the way. Which is insane. He, he came in the year after. He was the draft after. <laughs> was he really? Yeah. Him and Drew Doughty were in the same draft. I think they were one, two. Yeah, they are loaded. Um, but it was good. Obviously, you know, looking back, Blackhawks take three points. Um, you know, we'll we'll take that, move on, and hopefully they can keep racking those up. Um, let's move in. Do you guys got anything else for the TCF Sports Minute? Bulls All-Star Game. Good and... to see Zach Levine. Good to have a bull back in the All-Star yeah, Game. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I mean, the Bulls' real test is after the All-Star break, their schedule gets very hard. Yeah, I think 32 games in 62 days. Yeah. Um, so we'll actually see what see what they're made of. See if they can Doesn't, uh, they doesn't can get a lot this. of the NBA pick up, though, in that regard? Doesn't, mm-hmm. aren't, aren't a lot oh, of yeah. teams playing yeah. a cramped schedule? Yeah. I'm also saying, they only I think strength of schedule out. also gets a little tougher, too. Oh, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, they. It seemed like they had a lot of games early in the or in the first half against like the you know the Wizards and teams that are near the bottom. But um, yeah, like you said, put up or shut up. Here, it's it's time to go. Um, let's move into our media recommendations. Um, if you don't know what these are, these are the movies, TV shows, podcasts, video games, albums, whatever you've been listening to. Um, Zach, what do you got for us this week, buddy? All right, I don't know if Boomy's listened to this one. It's macro dosing. With Arian Foster and PFT commenter, uh, their first show was about Alex Jones, and their second show was about Flat Earth. Um, this is just stuff. I, I'm I'm pretty interested in stuff yeah, like this, just dumb. because what a psycho. It it is kind of cool to hear like Arian Foster talk about like the ways of like how he's um, really gotten into. How do you explain it? Like um micro dosing yeah and stuff like that and how it opens his brain up and stuff it's just cool to listen to the way uh, him and pft talk about it then there's also billy there um so that's pretty pretty hilarious but uh, i think that's a, an awesome podcast i've heard good things i know a couple buddies of mine have texted me um if i've listened to it i have not um i need to trim out maybe a couple podcasts if you're into the psychedelics let's just say you would really like the or even just like weird conspiracy theory and like oh yeah you know, like, said, like flat that. earth it's just like and then they they talk about it in a way that we that you can understand yeah How, yeah i mean I, that that stuff can get very out there and confusing like they keep it funny they keep it they keep it interesting, but they also talk about the facts also. Yep. I'm in for the conspiracy theories and how you know the psychedelics just Oh yeah. yeah. It's I think just I think get them this both would be a podcast that Maddie and Boomy would both like. Well, That's I perfect. just followed it. I'm gonna start listening to it so I will report back. All right, check it out. All right, you Maddie, guys know I'm going you guys know I'm going the uh the kid route to uh because it's all I get to watch anymore is kid shows and <laughs> sports, so I'm going to the kids show again, Disney Plus, Marvel Superhero Adventures. It's a uh, comic book. Uh, uh, basically, it's a series of shorts. Um, you know, they've got probably 50, 60 of them, though. And it's all basically Spider-Man teaming up with various other Marvel uh, superheroes. And they take on, like, uh, more kids-sized um, appearance. And also, uh, the problems they face are more... Uh, more geared towards like little kids so it's a good way to get my kid into the, the comic book series the, the spider-man and uh, marvel universe uh you know got all the characters all the, the guardians of the galaxy guys all the uh black panther all the avengers you know thor captain america iron man everybody hulk hulk's his guy so um yeah so shout out that show it's 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 one i can actually uh Get some enjoyment out of finally too. Yep. 
<laughs> Love it. Got to start them early. So right. um, I actually have uh, two albums. Um, for those of you that don't know, I don't talk about this ton. I'm kind of a metalhead. Um, listen to, you know, very, uh, I guess I wouldn't say obscure, but um, now this first band, I got two albums, like I said, uh, is from a band that you've probably all heard of at some point. A Data Remember put out a new album last week. Um, it's called You're Welcome. Um, it's definitely worth checking out. It's not like the uh, the heavier stuff like you might be used to if you've listened to a lot of A Data Remember. Um, yeah, thank you. Obviously- experimenting with their sound but yeah you're welcome check out that from a day to <laughs> and if you are in the metal make sure you check out architect's new album uh for those that wish to exist i am a huge architects is one of my top five bands of all time they are um also kind of experimenting with their sound um but it's still very um it, it, you can tell it's them, but it's also a little bit more poppy. Um, so if you like even rock music, give it both of those a try. You never know, you might find something you like. But um, I got to give a shout out to uh, those two albums from Architects. Boomy, is that a new genre of music, poppy? I mean, it's like that's what we call <laughs> metal band tries to be like stuff they would play on the radio, you know. And like a day to remember definitely made that transition. Like when they came out, they were like big time in the hardcore scene. And then they had, if it means a lot to you, and then obviously everybody that went to college for like 10 years knows that song. Um, And then they change their sound a little bit. They go back to being heavy. And then, uh, but they've been in in metal for, I think their first album came out in 2002, almost 20 years. Um, But yeah, it's, it's definitely, it's interesting to me because I am a, I love the heavy stuff, but it's also cool to me to hear bands that are known for being heavy go and do like, more melody kind of stuff. I find that interesting and in like the the process of like quote Back unquote. Back in my day, we used to call that selling out. <laughs> yeah, I, I, that's one way to look at it. But I think it's I think it's cool when when you can do that and <laughs> make the like the op like the more poppy version, the the sellout version of it still sound good. Like that's pretty cool to me. Um, I'm just not remember. Man. Oh, you're you're spot on. Like, that is what a lot of people think of it as. Um, and obviously, like I could go in depth to a lot of these, but like a band I used to listen to a lot, um, uh, Bring Me the Horizon was like deathcore, hard, super hard metal. And then their vocalist actually like blew his vocal cords out and couldn't scream anymore, so they had to completely reinvent their music. Um, and they're very much more known for being a little poppy. So it's kind of interesting how how bands make that transition. But um, so that was my, my very strange tangent on, uh, on hardcore uh, death metal music, but uh, we will jump into ideas. If you ever want to talk, you know, death core and and heavy metal music, I'm your guy. So uh, shoot me a tweet or something and let me know. Find them on clubhouse, Twitter, and Instagram talking about death metal. Oh, I could I could do clubhouses for hours on deathcore, um, and and like post hardcore. That's my that's my uh, avenue do you remember right there. Guar? Let's move in. What'd you say? So, do you remember Guar? I've seen Guar. <laughs> that is the weirdest uh, I've ever been to. Yo, talk about an absolute trip. It's absurd. It <laughs> Those is guys a- are maniacs, and they've been doing it for like thirty something years. Oh yeah, forever. Those guys are nuts. That is a maybe we should all go to a guar show when we can go to concerts and <laughs> hockey. I'm a hard. Trip. I'm a probably hard pass on that. No, all right, Maddie. I'm buying you a ticket. <laughs> to the guar. Uh, but let's jump into ideas under the influence. I'll go ahead and get us started. Um, Going to a guar concert. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, wow, that's a, that's my second one. Then um, my first one is like. Um, I don't really know how to explain this, but you know how they have like touch tunes where you can play your own music at the bar. Uh-huh. I want a similar situation for the TVs. You have a thing where you're like, oh, I want to watch this. So you pay your whatever it is, 99 cents to watch this game. If you want to watch, um, if you're one of those weird guys that likes to watch uh, like TV shows, you can pay your money and watch that. So I think this is a, a way to help, you know, instead of having to go to the bartender and say, hey, can you turn on this? Can you, t-? if it's a super crowded bar, you don't have to worry about it. Hey, we all want to watch the, you know, the Bulls Pacers game, ninety nine cents. Boom, it's on there. Hmm. Obviously, it needs some refining. It's not a. It, it, yeah. It's sitting on the uh, design room floor. But oh, shut up! That's a good idea. It's got some holes in it, but name one. <laughs> Almost the whole thing. <laughs> what do you mean? I mean, you literally stopped by saying it's got some problems. Okay. 
It, I'm just talking so about. So when I like, say there's problems, don't ask me what. You already <laughs> said there's problems. No, I just said it needs some refining because no like, there's got to be a way. Like, if you want to watch like Burn Notice, and I could pay two dollars to turn that off. Why do you want to watch Burn Notice? Is what I want. I don't know. I'm just making something up here. I'm just saying. I think I'd rather watch Suits. Well, if you wanted to watch Suits and I wanted to watch the Bulls game, maybe I paid double what you paid, and then we get into a little bit off. Who wants to watch what they want to watch? You know. No, we're not. We're not selling your idea on Shark Tank. No. We'll see about that. Mine's <laughs> genius, boys. Why do they not sell peanut butter and jelly? Like yes, in the like in the same jar, like with a little divider. They do the swirl one. I want like where that you can like a big jar and it's half peanut butter, half jelly, so you don't have to get two jars out every time. No, you I don't want cold. Rice. I don't want cold peanut butter. I'll they sell that. Butter. Yeah, I don't like the goober, dude. I don't like that's what it's called. It's not goober. great. I don't like the goober mix. No, no, I'm no, 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 no. I'm saying they're separate. I know what you're saying. I don't know that I wouldn't like that though because I don't want my peanut butter cold because you'd have to throw it in the fridge because of the jelly. So I don't want cold peanut butter. Maybe you double insulate the the peanut butter. It's got a little yeah, there we go. Like it's just a little bit thicker. <laughs> a little battery pack on that side. Just keep yeah, it off. Not, I'm not picky <laughs> about my peanut butter being cold. If you're if you're not, I could see why that would work. Mm-hmm. I just you know, I'm just thinking myself. I'm I, I'm being selfish here. I can tell. <laughs> we're, we're thinking about the whole world and the whole world. Yeah. Well, I'm not. I'm stuff. not buying. I, I'm gonna. St- I'm gonna go status quo oh. on my PBJs. All right. Listen, we're over two in Maddie's mind and Shark Tank idea. <laughs> well, you guys are gonna blow. I, I'm sure you guys are gonna really eat mine up then. So I already here's my it. idea. I know you do because that's just the way you are. You're not open minded about my my ideas. All right, but here's my thing. As yesterday, I was working in the yard, and I'm listening to music on my headphones, and I'm picking up all, like, just just mountains of dog shit, four or five bags of dog shit. So I'm listening to music, right? And you, just, you know when you're working, you got good music going, something that's got a little bit of little beat to it or whatever it may be. You start kind of maybe getting the head bob, maybe oh, wait, moving a little, little bit. Like the architecture. I, I'm always worried about what my neighbors think, like, what is this maniac doing? What is he listening to? Well, what if my music app was, let's say you're listening to Spotify or Apple Music, you have an ability to share publicly. So you could say, I'm going to share what I'm listening to right now. And so people in your surrounding area can see, oh, what's he listening to? He's listening to X. So that's why he's dancing like a fucking lunatic. Or, oh, maybe he seems like a normal person. Or maybe, wait, he's listening to Gore. I don't want to probably talk to that guy right now. So just maybe something like that. You can just kind of... It's an icebreaker. You can talk to a stranger and see, like, they're on a walking path next to you. And, hey, they're listening to one of my favorite songs. It's somebody I've never talked to. Hey, I love that song. How you doing? You know, hey, maybe we got something here. I don't hate it, but I listen oh! to But I, I personally, I don't think I would partake because I listen to some music I don't want other people knowing about. Um, there's, a button, there's a button to share. You just turn it out okay. and off if you want. Sounds you have my attention a little bit. Just say it. Yeah, that's kind of everybody we have facebook where people share every meal they share a picture of what they're fucking eating you don't you're telling me people don't want to share what they're listening to yeah and i think there's a way to do that on spotify but like i like what you're kind of going to more like a like, I feel like that, letting the immediate like, like people somebody, around you know like somebody getting into my phone but sh- you're allowing them to <laughs> you have the ability to then say no yeah, you can turn it on and off. It's like, hey, I want to listen to... Uh, it. There's ways around it, I feel like. I want to listen to Ace of Bass's greatest hits, and I don't want <laughs> you're my... Just looking, you're just looking for a critique. That's all let's you're doing say, right now. Yeah, let's Zach, just, Zach just would, came to poo-poo on everybody's ideas yeah. tonight. So let's just say I wouldn't bring this to the Shark Tank crew. <laughs> right, well, there we go. I'm going to go against Zach on this one, Matt. I don't hate that. Yeah, thanks. See, at least we got some honesty here. Zach just woke up and chose violence this morning. Yeah, Zach chose anarchy today. Yeah. Which, I he's probably going to hate all my NBA players here soon, too. Exactly. With that being said, let's move in. It is All-Star, the NBA All-Star weekend. We are going to choose our 
all time, uh, even all time players, current players are all star teams. So we have to take a point guard, shooting guard, small forward, and a power forward, and a center, as well as a coach. We are going to do it snake draft style, as always. And I have designated Matt to go one overall. Um. Well, I'm I'm taking a, a steadfast rule that I'm just going to eliminate taking Chicago Bulls players because for myself it's just I'm just not going to do it just because it would be Jordan would be one one in my opinion. But I'll defer and let one of you guys have Jordan on your team. I'm going to go with the uh, a guy I only saw the tail end of his career, uh, but one of the greatest trash talkers of all time, um, probably the best shooter of all time, uh, the Hick from French Lick, Larry Legend, Larry Bird. Don't walked hate in, it at all. Walked into the three-point contest locker room and said, boys, who's finishing? Who's second? getting second? That's all time. And then the I just saw it recently, the clip of the game where he got tired of playing with his right hand, so he said he was only going to shoot with his left. He, and he was scored. just an unbelievable gunner, and I just want a gunner. I want a guy that can anywhere step inside half court and be able to hit it, and uh, I'm going to go there. Yeah, don't hate that at all. Zach, you get to go second. I'm going to go Chicago Bulls, but we don't have to go Michael Jordan. I'm going MVP Derrick Rose. Ooh. Can I do that? Can I, can I go sure. like a specific time? Fine. Yeah, I, want 80, I want 1985 Larry Bird then. That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> no, we know what you mean. Like a healthy young Derrick Rose. Yeah. Yep. Uh, I, I, I will go ahead. I was watching some highlights today. I think it was one when he, he had a game winner against the Bucks. It, yeah, it was just awesome. I miss that I'm, so much. I'm gonna go two easy ones. I'm gonna go MJ at shooting guard. Um, like that's a uh, very easy pick. And then um, at power forward, I'm going to go with Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. I think those are two pretty easy picks. I think um, you gotta plug him at center, but I'm just, I'm not gonna be picky. We'll see if my center's still there when we get back to me. Where would we – what was – what? so I can't get Magic Johnson then because I already went point guard? I went – I I say – I don't know. It's the ultimate. No, game. not just so because it's a positionless it's, NBA. Now. It's it's three wings and two posts. So yes, I want to go I want to go Magic Johnson. You can have two. You can have two guys that handle the ball. Because That's especially if you think about it, like Derrick Rose could play off the ball. Magic Johnson sure. could play. They were good enough to do that. You know, it's well, not like Derrick it's 1951 Rose, where Rose, he, if he had Magic Johnson to make some of those passes when he was going to the lane. Yeah. I mean, oh yeah. Derrick Rose going to the lane was unbelievable. Yeah, I'll give you that, Matt. You got two. Uh, all right, I'm gonna go. Um, probably my. Favorite North Carolina player of all time, and that's Vince Carter. Uh, half man, half amazing. Uh, I went with the uh, three point shooter on uh, for the three point contest. I went the dunker for uh, the best dunk uh, dunk contest performance. Sorry, Neek. Sorry, Jordan. Uh, Vince Carter's was the best of all time. So Vince Carter it is. And I am also going to take another backcourt mate, um, and I want the healthy version before his body broke down, and that was Penny Hardaway. Yeah. I don't know if you guys – you guys probably didn't get to see oh, him yeah. in his prime, but um, when he was uh, healthy and his knees weren't shot, uh, six, seven, every bit of as close to Magic Johnson as there could be, I think, in my opinion, um, could do everything, handle the ball, so, so smooth and slick, great and shooter, got to the average rim. average actor in blue chips. Great acting performance in an unbelievable basketball movie. Yes. Butch McRae, what a character. Good choice. I'm, I'm going to go with the center, Shaquille O'Neal. Shaquille O'Neal. I mean, like you were saying with Penny Hardaway, imagine if those two could have had like a, a dynasty together. Ooh. Also in blue chips, too, Neon Badeau. I mean, yeah. that, it, Shaquille O'Neal, like right at the beginning, unstoppable. And then yeah, he, when he got when he got to the, the Lakers, and oh, you couldn't stop that guy. Good choice. Thank yeah, you. I dominated the NBA for 20 years. Um, I'm going to go with my favorite current player. This is an easy one, just to piss you guys off. LeBron at small forward. Um, 
And then I will go with my point guard, and this is a personal choice. I don't think he's the greatest point guard of all time, but he was my favorite player growing up. I still have two of his jerseys right over there. Allen Iverson, uh, give me all of the answer. He was without a doubt. He, he just defined cool when I was nine years old. Um, I had a, you know, the jerseys, the wristbands, the headbands, all that stuff. That was the coolest thing when I was growing up. So Allen Iverson. I I don't really know where I'm at with positions here. I have Magic Johnson, Derrick Rose, and Shaquille O'Neal. I don't know if he really fits on here, but I'm going to go Kevin Durant. Yeah, you can play him at a wing. Yeah, he play him everywhere, Durant. basically. Yeah, I mean, he's, he's, like he he he, he plugs a, in as a center. He's a seven now, foot. Too, he's a seven match. footer who can shoot a three, go to the basket, run the point if you really needed him to. I mean, it's unbelievable what what he can do with with his height. He definitely like kind of I don't know what the best word is, but he's very trans <laughs> where you can put him. He can literally play everywhere. So don't hate that. Thank you. Matt, you have your final pick and a coach. Oh, yeah. Don't I have two? Oh, yeah. My two yeah, players, you're right. I we think, went sick. So. Sorry. All right. I'm going to go uh, my my only current player. Um, I'm going to take a post player center. Uh, Nikola Jokic. I love his game. And just for this big, dopey-looking white dude that just, like, he passes like a point guard. He shoots from three. He's a great rebounder, solid defender at this point. You know, kind of does everything. His offense just kind of flows through a big man like him. It's it's pretty crazy to see, and uh, you know, him and Murray, you know, on the same same team together. Just it's such a good offensive team. And give me that guy on my All Star team any day of the week. Good choice. Good choice. Um, just uh, you got one other, right? Yeah, one more, yep. and I'm gonna go the complete opposite. I want the junkyard dog, and that's KG. That's a good one. Oh, the baddest, baddest man on the planet. Can I go, Coach? Or do you sure, have to wait yeah. for the last one? Nope, you, no, can. you don't have to. I'm gonna go Phil Jackson because you figured out in that last dance that yes, he had great players. Yes, that's 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 all known, but he knew how to talk to them how to let them let them be when they needed when they needed time like he he knew how to really manage a team like you, you, when you're in the NBA you you can do all the coaching you want you got to be able to let the, those guys trusted him in, in a in a crazy situation too yeah, obviously the guys won more than just about anybody, so can't uh, poo-poo on that pick at all. Um, I'm going to go with um, my power forward. Um, I was going to take Carl Malone, not a Carl Malone fan, not as a person. I hated him when he played against the Bulls. Um, so I'm going to go with the big fundamental. Give me Tim Duncan. Um, it, Duncan it, was better than Malone anyway. Couldn't agree more. That's a great, great statement. Um and then my coach. Now, I need a coach who maybe, you know what, we might not get the title, but we're going to get to the to the finals. We're going to get to the conference finals every year. Pat Riley. He's going to get us there somehow or another. We might not win it, but we're going to get to the going to get to the dance. We're at least going to punch our ticket to the dance. So, he's going to give us a, a a shot, a a swinging chance there at the end. I like that. I think Chris Rock had an old bit about Coach Pat Riley he may not get you to the promised land, but he'll, you know, he might not get you to the mountaintop, but he'll get you to the promised land or something like that. That's a classic Chris Rock. Bit. You know what? I'm going crazy here. I know this is, I'm going to have a very tall lineup, but I'm going <laughs> Dennis Rodman. He doesn't need to be out there. I don't need him to score baskets. I just need him to get the rebound and get the ball to the other players. And he knows how to. Plays his role. Yeah. Maddie, finish us up. You need a role player. Uh, well, I need a coach, and <laughs> I kind of want the guy. I, I want the the demeanor. Vinny Del Negro is still available, just so you know. Yeah, um, I want the Jim version Boylan? of Crazy. I want the version of John Paxson going down to punch Vinny Del Negro or choke him <laughs> or whatever he did. That's the Vinny Del Negro I want. Uh, no, I I'm gonna go with the persona of uh, 
of Red Auerbach smoking stogies on, yeah. the, on the sideline. Yeah, that's a good choice. Just counting rings and, uh, you know, just talking all kinds of shit, kind of just being arrogant and a little bit cocky. Um, and, I think know, Red Auerbach was allowed to be a little cocky and a little like, arrogant. When you, when you win a decade of championships, like, yeah. 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 If you have more rings <laughs> than fingers, I think you're a lot. Like, Bill Russell's the same way. Well, like, you're and when you're doing that. it against, when you're doing it against, and obviously having Bill Russell and, and the rest, so, you know, we don't have to go through the, the, the Celtics yeah. organization then, but, but doing it against Will Chamberlain and what some of the other, you know, the rest of the league had, you know, up against them too it's, it's pretty incredible so i just want the guy that's smoking stogies on the sideline anyway we need more of that in the nba I for agree. sure we do for sure let us know how we did whose team you liked whose team you didn't um i but, don't see why nfl coaches shouldn't be allowed to smoke a stogie oh that used to be a big outdoors thing. Yeah, everybody used to and like baseball managers used to just rip heaters in the um, dugout Jim, oh, Jim Leland, yeah. Yeah, Jim Leland. Jim Leland. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Big time. He was notorious for it. Oh, yeah. He loved a good SIG after about the third inning. He just didn't care. Um, Can't blame but, that. Fellas, that was episode 99. Our next episode of Typical Chicago Fans will be episode 100. Um, but thank you for joining us. Uh, you can find us on Twitter at typical underscore Chicago, uh, Facebook, Instagram, type in typical Chicago fans, give those pages a like, head over to YouTube, subscribe there for all of our content in video form, subscribe rate and review Apple podcasts, follow us on Spotify, Spreaker, Google podcasts, wherever you get your podcasts, we are there. Uh, Make sure to follow me at Boomy TCF. Make sure to follow Zach at Z Lilia TCF and Maddie at schools underscore zero one. May I also, while you're checking things out, head over to twitchshirts.com Chicago. Use promo code typical Chicago fans for all of their awesome gear. Get yourself 15% off. Like I said, promo code typical Chicago fans. But fellas, that was episode 99. We love you all. Peace. Drilled it.